All right, as we continue with the great one, Mark Levin, his new book, American Marxism, is uh, out Tuesday. It's uh, on Amazon.com. We'll be in bookstores next week everywhere. Uh, and a big driver of the Democrats' far left turn is the indoctrination. We see it in the media, big tech, our nation's universities. Give me one second here, Mark, and, and I want to just lay out something fundamental. I've been on radio, as you know, 33 years. I've been here at Fox 25 years. I've been a consistent conservative. I've changed some views, but not a lot, very consistent. And conservatism, if you break it down to what, it, what, what we believe as conservatives, we, be, we believe in liberty, we believe in freedom, we believe in capitalism, we believe in our Constitution, we believe in low taxes, less government regulation, constitutionalists on the bench. We want free market solutions for issues like health care and, yes, protect pre-existing conditions. Uh, we, we believe in law and order and safety and security so people can pursue happiness. We want choice in schools. We want energy independence for national security reasons and for the economy, economic reasons. We want our borders secure. We want free and fair trade, and we believe in peace through strength. I might have missed one or two things. Now, when you look at a poll, one that came out this week, a lot of young people, 18 to 34, so it's split almost evenly, They're, they find redistribution, new green dealism, socialism, leftism, authoritarianism, Marxism even, appealing. Why? Why do you think Bernie Sanders wants free college for all students? Because these are indoctrination mills. We're not teaching mathematics and science and physics the way we used to. Now, how do I know that? Because I read what these professors write. And you can ask your own kids who go to college, or many of you at Thanksgiving, you send your kids to college, they come back, and you don't recognize them. This is why they want to wipe out student loans. This is why they want free college for all. This is why they don't regulate tuition prices, what goes on in classrooms, what these college empires build and so forth. They regulate everything except two things, trial lawyers and colleges and universities. And one of the things I suggest in the solutions section of my book, it's time to get our hands dirty and dirt under our nails. We don't need to continue to fund these universities and colleges mostly through state taxing, uh, but also federal grants and, of course, tuition and pretend we have no say on what the hell goes on in these classrooms? How are faculty chosen? How are faculty tenured? How are classes determined? How are books determined? What's going on on these campuses? At least Republican legislatures. Shouldn't they start to claw back? Shouldn't there be oversight? Shouldn't we start to pull money away from these universities? If they're teaching our children to hate us, hate this country, hate faith, we are doomed. So there is no reason for this. So in the book, I lay out a plan for taking on these colleges and universities. You know, we have power. We have power in numbers. We have power in resources. We don't have to sit back and watch this anymore and say, oh, my Lord, what's happened to my kid? What's happened to your kid? We're sending our most precious thing, our children, into these institutions, and they're coming out, and we don't even recognize them. Who do you think is in the streets? Who do you think it is that's protesting to overthrow this country? There's chapter and verse in this book, what they're being taught, who's doing it, they, how they dehumanize and de-individualize their word. They want to create revolutionaries. They brainwash them on mob action. They brainwash them on protest techniques. They even encourage them to be violent. They teach them Marxism and neo-Marxism. It's going on. And you and I are paying for it. Now, what do you say we do something about that? That's well, just one little example. It, it, and I want to, people to understand here, we're really only touching the surface. The detail yes. and specificity on each of these issues that you are mentioning and listing, you go into great detail and explain specifically how, how they'll use climate change as a mechanism, how our universities as a, it's used as a mechanism, um, the wording, the language, the media, the institutions uh, that they use. Um, I don't want to get ahead of myself here. Now that we have identified the problem, in the next segment, we're going to get to what the solutions are. But more importantly, I want to ask you this. 
You said in Liberty and Tyranny, you said in the past, one of your past books that we are in a post-constitutional America. Do you still believe that? And can we get it back before oh. we get to our next before we get to our next segment, which is, you know, how to choose liberty and, and save this country? In many ways, we are in a post-constitutional America. We just had an election and two lawsuits in Pennsylvania, one in particular, in which the lawsuit said, apart from machines, apart from ballots, apart from all of it, that the Constitution makes abundantly clear, clear in Article 2, Section 1, Clause 2, that the state legislatures make election law in the states, particularly as it applies to the selection of a president and vice president. So you have a state of Pennsylvania where the governor, where the secretary of state, and where the radical left uh, Supreme Court elected Supreme Court changed the laws, the election laws in Pennsylvania at the urging of the DNC and their lawyers to help the Democrat Party and the Democrat candidate. Think of what you will about all the rest of it. That is a prime case for the Supreme Court to take up to interpret whether or not these entities within the state had the power to undermine the Republican state legislature, change the election laws in violation of the federal constitution. And to the best we can tell, only two or three Supreme Court justices wanted to take up that case. We have a very, very weak separation of powers now. It's been under attack by the so-called progressives for 100 years. They only believe in the courts when they get the reactions and the answers that they want. They only believe in the elections when they win them. Otherwise, they attack it. S-1, H-R-1, the entire purpose is to make permanent the Democrat Party and eliminate any influence any opposition party or the Republican Party has. They want to pack the court. They want to pack the Senate. They want to change the legislative process. They want to destroy the Electoral College. They want to open the borders. The problem in this country is just like Marxism. It's party first, country second. The Democrat Party has more in line with the ideology of some of these Marxist parties than the American people want to admit. That is, party first, party power, party influence. If you have to kill the Constitution, kill it. If you have to rearrange the government, rearrange it. If you have to issue 420 executive orders, issue 420 executive orders. If you have to spend $6 trillion to strengthen your party, to strengthen your movement, then do it. Because yeah. the party is the way to power and the party controls the country. That's their mentality. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.